Whoa, 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 it's Vlogger Day 666. Calm down, my Christian brethren. Morning. It's Sunday, which means today it's Mercy Ships Monday for you. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about friendship. Oh, friendship. I did talk a little bit about the friends that I had on uh, the trip with me, the Beltrans, and the importance of having people around who support you in your creative endeavors because there's a level of when you're a creative person, I guess, when you, you, you're the only person that believes in yourself in so many ways. Like you, you put everything you can into the art that you're creating, and if you don't believe in yourself first and foremost, Really, nobody will, like that's the end of that. But there are really good friends in the world who will come along and support you in every capacity. And Jeff in particular has been one of those. His family has become that for me over the years as well. Like Manny supported Into the Nanton back when we did Kickstarters for it as well. They've read my books. That's just an example of friendship on that side. On the other side, I thought I'd talk about what friendship looks like on Mercy Ships. I think friendship looks very similar across the board. There's nothing profoundly unique, I don't think, to my experience of friendship, to anyone else's experience of friendship. But there are certain circumstances with Mercy Ships that make the friendships that you have very unique. So I thought I'd talk about that today. A little bit of housekeeping as well before we dive into it. Even before my video has gone live today, Patreon has jumped up a little bit more. We are within striking distance of two things, which is pretty crazy. One is the next goal, which is unlocking cars. I'll rent a car when I do my regional travel, which I'm gonna do a regional poll here soon, go on a trip somewhere in France very soon, hopefully. Actually, we could do one really soon, potentially. We should look into that. And two, 200 patrons. We have, I'm three patrons away from having 200 patrons. That is insane. Holy cow, thank you all so very much. That is nuts. I also, uh, just as an update, you'll notice I'm not very tired. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm doing pretty well. I slept well the last two nights. Last night I took myself out on a date. I'm actually making a pretty good date, it turns out. I uh, went to the movies, and because the movie was gonna cost 15 euros, and a monthly pass is 19 euros a month, I bought a movie pass. So now I have a movie pass, so now I can go to movies as much as I want every month. If for those of you who've been following along, you know I've really wanted to buy one of those for the last year and just didn't feel like I could afford to. Well, I thought I would treat myself. So thank you, especially to my patrons who made that possible, just make, helping me feel a little bit more stable in that way. Wow, that's really cool. So I feel really good because I went out with myself and we had a great time and I went straight to bed. It slept so well. Anyways, friendship on Mercy Ships. There's a combination of things that I think make Mercy Ships friendships particularly unique. None of these things in and of themselves are necessarily unique to Mercy Ships alone, but I do think that the combination of them does make it fairly unique. I don't want to claim that there's like nothing else in the world like it, because I think that's probably patently untrue. However, there are certain aspects, elements of it that combined do make for a unique experience. Time, proximity, and intensity, I think are like the three things that make them particularly unique. There are probably more elements to it than that, but we can stick with those. So time is short when you're with Mercy Ships. It, well, it's variable as well. There are a couple different elements to time when you're on the ship that kind of throw you for a loop. One, there are some people that only come for a couple of weeks at a time, or if you're like me, I only went for a few days to visit, right? So time can be really, really short. It also be pretty long. There are people that commit to be there for a year, two years at a time. So there's always this kind of interplay between how long have you been here? How long are you staying? Where do you fit into this whole mess? Because after you say goodbye to enough people rapidly enough, and thousands of people go through that ship. You stop really wanting to spend too much time with people that aren't there for very long maybe, or who are there for too long, or whatever works out. The element there is a little bit dicey. The other side of it is how time warps when you're on the ship. Days can feel like weeks, and weeks can go by in a matter of hours. That, that That's kind of true of life in general. I mean, time compresses, depending on circumstances all the time. However, because Mercy Ships is so adrenaline filled, and just often there's just so much going on in any given day, so many adventures, so many life-changing events happening, just crazy stuff going on all the time. Time, you get months worth of experience packed into just a couple of weeks all the time. It's insanity. It's really hard to describe. So that time element drives a whole bunch of different friendship dynamics than you would expect. It also drives you closer together because you don't have a lot of time together, so you make the most of it. And you also spend a lot of time together. Like, you live together. You live just feet away from each other all the time. You eat, which leads us to proximity.
ultimately proximity is the key to friendship. If you're not close to people, it's really hard to stay friends. Over distance you can, modern communication helps with that a lot, but being close to people physically is a key element to developing good lasting relationships. And Mercy Chips excels at that because they cram 400 people into a little metal box and you end up bunking with a number of them. And at the end of the day, proximity is something you can't get away from because you wake up with them, you eat with them, you work with them, you play with them, you do everything with the same people over a span of time. And you, it either generates conflict or it generates really close friendship. Well, it generates both, let's be honest. It generates both. You know what else generates conflict? Hunger. I'm, I, need, I need lunch. Paul wanted a hot dog, and I haven't had a hot dog since I took Jeff to Clark Dogs, so I feel like, you know what, the timing works out pretty well. Speaking of hunger, which can be intense, the third element I was referring to is intensity. The intensity of the friendships is obviously increased by the time and the proximity. The fact that you live together and work together in a very extreme environment. So there are more extreme environments in the world. When you're living and working as volunteers on a hospital ship, doing these massive surgeries, operating an old Danish rail ferry in less than ideal conditions, ships are meant to move. And it, since it's docked most of the time, it's actually a lot harder to maintain. Everything's just a little bit more intense, ultimately leading to some pretty intense moments and pretty intense friendships. When you're watching people die together, like when you're working with friends in a life and death situation, my special forces friends likened a couple of the countries we lived in to living in like a green zone in a conflict area. There's high levels of stress, and I'm not saying that it's always, always like that, but higher levels of stress, the fact that you're facing mortality together. I mean, the first time I ever saw somebody die and ever saw dead bodies was with these friends that I made with Mercy Ships. It lends itself to a level of intensity that bonds you in a way that most life circumstances simply don't very quickly. And so it makes for intense familial relationships out of circumstances that would otherwise, that are just very, very high pressure. And those are elements that make Mercy Ships friendships different, somewhat unique, certainly unique. I don't know, they're unique to me at least. They're unique in my life. I think I'm gonna figure out the new lighting situation in here. Anyways, that's a little bit of a Mercy Ships Monday for you. One of the things I forgot to mention on the intensity side of things was goodbyes. I mentioned how many people go through the ship. Like when I was in Sierra Leone, I think 1,600 volunteers went through the ship just in that 10 month spam. So you're saying goodbye a lot. And dockside goodbyes are, are really cool. You saw that when I left the ship, actually. There were a bunch of people that came down and said goodbye in the dock, which is really nice of them. But when you're doing that all the time, it does make it really difficult as well, both like emotionally, say goodbye all the time, and also to make new connections long term. So. Friendships on the ship, like some of my friends on the ship, I, it's, it's kind of like any other thing in life, any other season in life. There are friendships that last for a long time and others that fade fairly quickly, some that fade over time. But a lot of the friendships that I did make on that ship, it's a lot higher percentage of people that when I connect with them again, it feels like we never lost touch, you know, we never stopped hanging out. There's a really good depth of friendship there. So I'm really, really grateful for it. With that, I'll go ahead and leave you. I'm gonna finish this off for today. I feel like there was one other thing. Oh, I've been working on, <laughs> The one, one update for those of you who backed the Kickstarter, uh, I've had a second cartographer fall through on me, so I'm just making the map for the book myself to try and keep it on schedule. Hopefully it all comes together. I've actually been enjoying making it. That's what I was working on today. We'll get that underway and hopefully actually have uh, the ebook ready in the next like week or so is really the plan. I hope so. Gotta get it done soon. Uh... This week is gonna be dedicated generally to getting as much work done as I can. And I'm really looking forward to kind of hacking through a few things, get that book out, get uh, some work done for Insta Freebie, as well as get caught up on just a number of other things that are dangling around. Oh, I just thought of one that I was supposed to try and get done yesterday. I got a lot of stuff to get done. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up for today. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe, of course. And we are, like I said earlier, on the verge of 200 patrons. Thank you to all of you who have been a part of it, all 197 of you, for jumping on and declaring your belief in what I'm doing so tangibly. It means so much to me. We are very close to unlocking the next goal, and I'm just, my mind is just generally blown. I actually sent an email to Patreon to thank them uh, for creating a tool that has been so impactful for my life. And it sounds like, I'm hoping that I get to meet a couple of them at VidCon. Be really, really cool. But even if I don't get a chance to meet them at VidCon, they've produced something that, that is definitely life-changing. It's a wonderful tool, very, very grateful for it. And I'm most grateful for you 
grabbing and jumped on it if you're one of my patrons. So thank you so much for doing that. I gotta get some work done. So I will see you bright and early tomorrow morning for another riveting round of life in Paris on a Monday morning. Although it's already Monday for you, so happy. Oh, and happy Mother's Day. I gotta call my mom. I'm gonna call my mom right now. Happy Mother's Day.